I am going to say welcome to One Hour One Mindset of Spiritual Living on this beautiful Sunday morning. And I'm going to welcome Jesse, our beloved friend Jesse, to, to uh, warm us up with some music. All right. Can you hear that? Okay. We'll do this first one. If anyone has any notes about the sound, you can leave them in the chat for me. Sometimes it feels like my heart is stuck in a revolving door. It can get me down so much. I don't even want to mess with it anymore. Oh, that's a too familiar feeling. Oh, but I don't let it get too far. No, no, I'm too good at staying cool. Guess I know what it is. I'm out in When the shadow of love is creeping in, like a thief from my I turn on the light, only my soul knows my path. I'm getting through I'm getting Yes, I am free when I am. Hey, if I just keep trusting, if I keep the faith, then I and I, I, I know. In all ways, if we relax, sit back, and let the universe take care of that stuff. Thanks, Jesse. You know what? When you uh, earlier said that you might need to move, I, I think you're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll work on that. Okay, because it was real choppy. You were in and out. We couldn't hear most of the music. Perfect. All right, great. I'll fix it. I'll try. Yeah, and usually we can. You're usually awesome. We can usually hear you very clearly. I don't know what. You know, it's just one of those days. So we'll just shift and move into knowing it will be perfect in a minute. All right. Hey, right, thanks, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lisa. I would like to welcome our fabulous, amazing practitioner of the day, who always fills me with such heart and wisdom. And I and I love that about you, Lisa. Well, thank you so much. Bring yourself to every service. You really do. And you're just a delight. So um, she is going to do our invocation. And I'm sure she's got some words of wisdom. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Let's take a nice deep breath that pulls us all together into the moment. And I want to express gratitude for the opportunity that we have to congregate each week in a way that puts us in the space of looking at the world from spirit's point of view and to be able to celebrate the one spirit that unites us and makes us makes us one and provides 
the real the real inspiration for for our lives and so i i want to speak my word for each and every person who is here and who is open to the messages from from reverend michelle and to the whole process of of enlarging our consciousness and embodying more peace and love and joy in our everyday life and so i release my word into the law with a great deal of gratitude and we can release together by saying and so it is so it is and so i wanted to let you know that this is this whole thing this month the basic um idea for the month was speaking truth to circumstance and i and i actually have paid a lot of attention to that this this week for my own perspective and life and moving away from the big courageous kind of things that that people can do and really kind of looking at the everyday sorts of things that happen um sometimes just out of people's heart and I, I was reminded in one part of that yesterday I was with my family and um I am <laughs> first of all was my brother the oldest at 78, the oldest um, driver for the San Diego trolley company for their tour. And it's like he, he is retired and he's been doing this now for a year, but he it's like he is having such great joy with it. And what I realize is because of the fact that it pulls all the good stuff out of him, that he really likes people and he loves to help people. And so he was telling us these wonderful stories yesterday of, of people that he supported in, in, in relationship to their trip and to, the, to quieting the screaming baby by talking to him and giving him something and just different things like that. And I just thought it just made me feel good thinking about the, and the whole circle that was there in, in terms of, of his standing for being who he is and giving this gift to, to people and speaking. And he says that the hardest thing for him is he has this, he has this four or five step process when he has rowdy people, you know, the people who get in and they're laughing and they're looking at their cell phone, et cetera. And it's, you know, it's a guided tour. So people are listening to what he has to say and being annoyed by this other noise. And so, you know, he, he kind of has these quiet things that he does initially to sort of get them to quiet down. And then he says the worst is, is his last one when he has to get up and go to the back of the bus and just tell them, you know, you really are making this a difficult trip for other people, et cetera. And he said he just feels so guilty at having to do that. You know, and it's like it's like it takes courage for him to do that because it's pulling pulling away from the joyfulness of this trip where he's making jokes and so forth. So any anyway, of that was one. And then the second one was my um, one of my grandnieces, who's a 23 year old nurse who goes on missions. Last year she went to Africa and this year she just came back from the Philippines. And there is part of this journey that was in this town that's sort of in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's, it's a medical mission. And so they're, you know, they're taking medical supplies to people. And these are people that are just out in, in the boonies and are, it's like she indicated with these wide eyes, I was the first white person that some of these people have ever seen. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, but in order to get there, they had to take a six mile walk through this hot, dusty, what have you thing. But it was kind of like, you know, and they were told that the, there's a, a gang, um, you know, like a Muslim gang that's been beheading Christians. And, <laughs> and it's kind of like, she said, you know, like that I heard that, but I, it, didn't, it didn't stop me. You know, and it was just kind of like this sense of she has she has a really deep love for Jesus and really likes serving people. And so it was like that internal spiritual guided message took her past the the fear. Um, and I mean, I was just amazed. And she said it was just 
it was so wonderful and that that she felt that she that she gained more than she gave and i you know and i thought that's one of the other gifts of courage and so then i thought about myself and i had a problem at the beginning of this little period of time in terms of thinking that i might have to quit my writing group because now i have this writing group there are only four of us it's the the, we meet on Zoom and since COVID, and um, because one and one of the people is in South Dakota, but I suddenly realized that all three of these, all four of these people, are far more conservative than I, and uh, you know, because being a small group, you end up chatting about this and that. And two of them are, one of them is a very devout Catholic who doesn't like the Pope and is very orthodox. And then another one is a new convert, new Catholic convert who has distinct views. And it's like initially I could feel myself becoming overheated at certain things. All my buttons were being pushed. And I tend when my buttons are pushed, as I'm sure many of you do, to react. And since I live so much in my head and have so many different kinds of pieces of information, sometimes I lock into a belief pattern that then I have to fight. But that's not really the courage that I need. And that's what I discovered, because the courage that I need is, is something that I heard in a talk by Reverend Michael once, which was, um, if you can't say something kind, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> And so that's what I realized was that, you know, there are certain times when there are certain times when it's important to speak, when you feel like you can, you're making a difference or that the person is willing to hear. But there are other times when it only just inflames the situation. And so that's what I didn't want to do because I realized, because as I say at the beginning, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking, I just may have to leave because I don't like hearing this. But then I realized that most of our time is spent with our work and that I really love the work, you mm -hmm. know, and I really feel that they are helping me. And, the, and even bigger is my recognition that I'm good at editing. And so I'm really giving a gift to them. And so it was kind of like I just really settled down and settled into this statement from Ernest. We have thought that the outside world controlled us when all the time we have had that within that could have changed everything and given us freedom from bondage. Mm. And so I thought that that aligned very much with the topic. And I think it aligns with what, what Michelle is talking about in terms of coming from the heart, coming from within. So that's what I have to say, and I hope it didn't talk too long. No, that's fine, Lisa. Thank you so much. I, I was reminded as you were speaking of something that Reverend Ken Gordon told me one time. He said, you can tell anybody anything as long as you come from a sacred heart. And right. I think that's true. Here's our affirmation for the uh, month. You want to read it, Lisa? Sure. I have the power to live the life of good. My power is from on high. It cannot be taken from me. It will not leave me desolate. Power flows through me and is in me. It is my power and it is continually present. I am the power to live. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I love your story. So, Jesse, <laughs> have you rearranged? I have rearranged. I wonder how it will be. How does it sound right now? It sounds a little tunnely, but play music. It, it, before it was just copy. Let's see. I bet you sound better. Go for it, girl. Oh, yeah, better than it was. All right. A little fuzzy for some reason. A little crackly almost. Even when the guitar is playing? Or yeah, but it's, you're all, all of it is very quiet. It's quieter than the rest of the service. It's very quiet. Or the yeah. volume. Okay, hold on. Let me get really close to you guys. I have a different setup today, so it's a little, uh, yeah, it's a little different. Hold on. Yeah, usually your music is super clear and we can hear you really well. So, 
you know what? Since you're so awesome, usually, we're going to just lift you up and hold you in love and know that all is well. So you go for it, girl. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's so low. That's bothering me. It's a really low volume. It's a circumstance. <laughs> All right. Everything is divine and perfect. Right. <laughs> this is a lesson in listening. <laughs> They're in the center of my soul. Feel you all around me. Something holy and untold. But I hear it perfectly. Somehow. In the deepness of now. I can see I was made in the image. I was made in the image of love. I was made in the image. I was made in the image of love. Here and now I can see I was made beautifully. I was made in the image. I was made in the image of love. Books and words and songs at the gate of all my longing, leaving certainty behind. I take one step in you. sound today is less than optimum and you're usually like right on you your bright shining spirit and your amazing voice still still came through and it was perfect and you are made in the image of love loved it loved it loved it and you know you really should put your um we have some um some fresh faces online put your uh, website in the chat so that they can and i know nan told me she got your album and she listens to it all the time and she loves it and you know, you're just so awesome. Love you so much, Jesse. Love you, love you, love you. <laughs> All right. 
Ah, so here we are. Good morning. One heart, one mind, center for spiritual living. You know, isn't it great the way we get to begin our week, you know, coming together in spiritual community with with people that are all about being in the presence, you know, all about being in love and wisdom and joy and order and intelligence, all of the stuff that is in in encapsulated in life, you know, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's just so great to be able to be with people that want to dive deep into the experience of the divine presence and and to discover who we are and our oneness with it. You know, you just got to love it. Just got to say that this morning. And, uh, and this morning, we continue our monthly theme, uh, which is speaking truth to circumstances. And so far this month, we've, we've talked about a lot of things, but we've talked about how the circumstances, events, and situations that arise in our lives, I mean, they're not really the monsters that they may appear to be, and, and that we can face them head on when we are aligned, when we align our thinking and our feeling and our state of being with that larger consciousness of love and universal truth. You know, rather than just spinning in the confusion and the cra craziness of the collective human consciousness, you know, there's a lot of fear out there, you know, and, and we also looked at how futile it is to go to battle with circumstances at the level of the circumstance, you know, fighting with an effect and how we are better served by planting new seeds, you know, new ideas in the realm of cause, in the realm of spirit, God. We've looked at how important it is to greet every life circumstance to the best of our ability in the present moment, within that present moment right now, without, you know, dragging the overlay of our past experiences or the expectations that we have for the future or this moment onto what is happening right now in, in this present moment. And today I'm inviting us to look at life circumstances, all of the life circumstances that we encounter well, in the present moment. What's weird is happening. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, that was funny. Uh, to look at all the circumstances that we engage with every day in the present moment and, and bringing to each moment great heart, you know, the heart of who we are in God. Because this week's message is not the typical science of mind, uh, Centers for Spiritual Living message. It's called Showing Great Courage. And um, the origin of the word courage comes from an old French word, courage, C-O-R-A-G-E. And it means heart, temperament, state of mind. Courage is born in the heart. You know, when we think of stories of courage, we think of stories like, I don't know, David and Goliath, Joan of Arc. Luke Skywalker, Nelson Mandela, these are people who were driven by the conviction of their hearts, you know, by, by the passion they felt for the inherent truth that was within them, you know. These were people who lived the, the courage of their convictions, you know, who were willing to stand on their beliefs. But, you know, I noticed as I was thinking about this is while their courage may have been inspired by some outward circumstance or event in the world, the conviction of their beliefs came from within. It had nothing to do with anything happening in that outside world. I mean, just take Nelson Mandela for an example. You know, his courage was inspired by the injustice of apartheid, but he stood on his belief that apartheid was not in keeping with divine truth. His heart knew that segregation and inequality of any kind was not spirit or God ordained. But the actions of these courageous people went against the grain of the common thought and, and the common logic of their day. You know, their conviction came from the wisdom of their own hearts. You know, they didn't believe what the world was tell, telling them, what circumstance was telling them. You know, they didn't believe, hey, David, you can't beat Goliath, or Joan, who do you think you are to try and defeat the English, or... Luke, you can't destroy the Death Star on your own, or Nelson, Mend Nelson, you can't transform a nation, but their hearts knew that the impossible was actually possible from this courage that was born in their heart. You know, it, 
it stands on knowing ourselves in truth in that divine realm in that infinite field of possibility whatever we want to call it you know i've been imagining for a long time that my heart is kind of like this portal to the divine presence, you know, to my connection with spirit. When I'm within my my sacred spiritual practice or meditation, prayer, or or simply contemplating the divine within the natural world, which I do a lot, love to watch the birds, it, you know, it's my heart that feels that presence of life, that presence of love and peace. And and when I feel a call from the divine to move in a certain direction, it comes from here, from my heart. When I got a call to ministry, I felt it in my heart. You know, it lit me up with this passionate fire. And then as it cooled down, which it always will, I still had to listen to my heart to see, all right, well, how's spirit going to pull this one off? I had to stay connected to that wisdom of the heart to find my way. And of course, over the past 20 years, and, and I've talked about this before, it's specifically built on the, on the um, uh, data and the uh, experiments held by the HeartMath Institute. But over the last 20 years, scientists have discovered all kinds of new information that validates my belief that the heart is connected to something larger. You know, it turns out that, that our hearts are far more complex than pre previously thought. You know, it's, our heart's far more than just an organ for pumping blood. Blood. It turns out that it actually does send us emotional and intuitive signals that help guide our lives. You know, not only is our, our heart in constant communication with our brain, but we now know that it even makes many of its own decisions. It has its own little brain. I think if I remember correctly, it's like 40,000 neurons that are exactly like the neurons in our brain, which brings kind of a whole new meaning to following your heart. You know, following your heart is listening to the intuitive wisdom of the larger self, listening within our oneness with God. So um, courage springs from that, I believe. And it's in the wisdom of our heart that we're empowered to speak truth to consequences to speak from our oneness in divine truth. You know, just like all the courageous characters in the stories that we hear, you know. But here's the thing. The stories that we hear, like the people I just mentioned and so many more, they're extraordinary people, even though they did these extraordinary things. It's just ordinary people who listened and trusted and acted. And I'm not saying that we should all go out and defeat the English army or transform a nation, but we could if we wanted to. Well, how about we just start right where we are and transform our own lives and, and impact the lives of those around us by listening to that divine truth and love and compassion and kindness with deep heart. You know, we can certainly do that. We can start there. You know, when I think of courage, as I was putting my talk together, first thing that came into my, my head was the lion from the Wizard of Oz. You know, and the, the whole story of the Wizard of Oz is a metaphor for finding our true selves. You know, and each of the uh, characters in the story portrays a different aspect of self. You know, the scarecrow, he wants a brain. He's looking for his inner wisdom. The tin man wants a heart. He's looking for love, self-love, to reflect out into the world. And the lion is looking for courage. He's looking for the courage of his convictions, which is seated in the heart. If you've ever seen the movie, movie, and I would imagine that all of us have seen it several times by this point in our lives, you, you know, you might remember that first scene when the lion comes on the scene and he jumps out of the forest and does this like little boxer stance with his fist in the air, and starts calling the Tin Man and the Scarecrow names, and he chases Dorothy's little dog Toto, and, and Dorothy gets really upset, and she goes over and she slaps him across the face, and he starts crying, and Dorothy says, well, you're nothing but a big coward, and then through a, a longer conversation, he finally decides that he's going to go with the others to Emerald City to ask the wizard for courage, and he's looking for that conviction in his own, he's looking for himself, he's looking for the courage to be who he is who he's come here to be he's just looking for that real self that he knows intuitively that's in there but of course he's looking in the wrong place because he's never going to find it in the outside world 
And I think he's also a little bit confused about what courage actually is. The, the lion kind of seems to think that courage is wielding power over others. But truly, <laughs> trying to wield power in the world over things and people is it kind of just compensating for the fact that we haven't yet discovered the power that's already within us. Power doesn't force. Power participates and flows. It doesn't resist. It allows and it, it moves with the only true power that there really is. And that's the power of creation, the power of God, spirit, the all that is. And that power is already within us. It, it's our true self. It's our divine nature. It's there. Do you remember how the lion finally finds its courage? When Dorothy is captured and taken away by to, to the castle of the Wicked Witch of the West, the lion who loves her dearly finally opens his heart. He, he's inspired with courage as his heart opens. And he's, he's taken out of his kind of constant focus or lamenting about what he thinks he lacks. And suddenly he discovers He's had it all along, just like Dorothy at the end of the movie with the ruby slippers, but I digress. But he discovers the power of his true self, you know, and, and there's this funny scene. I watched it on YouTube when I was preparing my talk. There's this funny scene at the at, just before he goes in to save Dorothy, and he says, um, I'll go there for Dorothy. Guards or no guards, I'll tear them apart. I may not come out, but I'm going in there. And he turns to the tin man and the scarecrow and he says, there's just one thing I want you fellows to do. And they say, what's that? And he says, talk me out of it. And it reminded me how easy it is sometimes to retreat into the common thinking that we can't do it, that it really isn't ours to do. You know, I remember again, when I decided to become a minister, I was looking for all kinds of reasons why I didn't have to answer the call. You know, you ever do that? You, you know you need to do something, but you have those moments where doubt and uncertainty kind of just creeps in. So let me make an observation, maybe a suggestion. We call science of mind a metaphysical philosophy. Meta meaning beyond what is visible. Um, and physical meaning the world of form and experience. Metaphysics deals with original cause. You know, we could call that heaven, mind of God, field of infinite possibility, consciousness. I like that one. And metaphysics also deals with the realm of change, the realm of effect, physical creation itself, which is impermanent and always changing. So science of mind is a philosophy that teaches how the spiritual principles of cause, the invisible, express as effects in the visible world. And, and science of mind teaches us, and many traditions do, I'm not just focusing on science of mind, teaches practical spiritual tools to help us kind of navigate these two worlds, the world of the invisible and the world of the visible. And, um, and this is how we are empowered to speak truth to consequences. You'll notice that until the lion got in touch with deep cause, the deep cause in his own heart, his own true God self, that he found, that's when he found his courage. And that's when he was able, with his conviction, to speak truth to circumstance. The circumstance that Dorothy had been captured by the wicked witch. And he found all the courage and the conviction that he needed within himself right where he is. He didn't have to become anything. He just had to realize who and what he already is. And even though he was a little scared and he wanted the others to kind of talk him out of it. So here's my suggestion. What if we made an effort to practice being more focused on truth, beauty, love, compassion, abundance? You know, I could go on and on. Vitality, prosperity, kindness, peace rather than constantly focusing on the challenges and the circumstances that have already demonstrated in our lives. Effects have no juice. They got no creative juice. We can let these challenges and circumstances motivate us and inspire us to create a new cause to shift our focus. But here's the thing. Law responds to what gets most of our attention. 
whether it's something we want or something we don't want. And quite frankly, it feels a lot better to practice drawing our attention back to the attributes of God that are already within us than trying to change the circumstances of the world so that they fit our idea and make us feel better. Remember that line from Eric Butterworth? We did a book study on his book. And uh, he said, circumstances have come to pass, not to stay. We just have to be present with everything and without resistance and without clinging. And through our spiritual practices, you know, we get better and better at seeing every circumstance, every situation and every event from the divine viewpoint, from divine truth, which always and always allows it just opens up we when we are there we allow it, it, spirit never resists you know it participates rather than controls and it it draws on the courage of our heart to be present in the moment and to reveal our true selves you know in the in the hindu tradition ganesh which is depicted as an elephant i'm sure i'm sure that you have seen the image probably in every gift shop in the country. Ganesh is the Lord of uh, all existing beings. That's it. I knew I could remember. And legend, legend has it that um, he was given the task to race around the universe. But Ganesh didn't walk on the surface of the earth when he was doing that. He simply walked inwardly. He walked with Shiva and Parvati, who are the mother and father of all existence. And this is the power of Ganesh, that the obstacles we experience are simply presented to us as ways for us to remember to do that inner walk with our source, not to walk or race in the outer world, which we are sometimes want to do, but to walk within, to see everything from that, the overlay of the divine presence. And then all the obstacles are removed once our deeper sense of self is restored, you know, I love that image of Ganesh walking inwardly with the creator of all things. You know, one of the main reasons, and there are many reasons, but one of the main reasons that we come together in spiritual community is that it serves to remind us. It serves as a reminder of the benefits of spiritual practice. You know, we encourage each other to continue our practice. We support each other through our spiritual practices and, and remind each other to stay dedicated to walking our talk. So let's stop here for a minute. Speaking of spiritual practice, and I invite you to take a breath and let your eyes soften or close if you like. And now for a moment, just for a moment, draw your attention to some little thing in your life that you don't like that you don't want to see anymore. You know, things that have popped up in your experience, could be something big, could be something minor, that you would prefer not to have. Just think of one thing. Now ask yourself, what keeps me in vibration of this not wanting this thing? What keeps me in the vibration of it? What gets your attention when you say things like, I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to struggle with life. What are you thinking and feeling that is keeping you in relationship with this something that you don't want to experience? How are you misusing the law? Are you more interested in the circumstance or what you really want or the truth that is already within you? The law will bring you what you are the most interested in, even if it's something you don't want. What do you have fear around? And now I invite you to change your point of view. What are you really interested in? Are you interested in peace? Are you interested in feeling peaceful? 
Are you interested in abundance and prosperity? Are you interested in health and well-being? Are you interested in beauty? Does joy interest you? Where do you want to put your attention? What are you interested in? And now I'm, I invite you to consciously shift the way you feel from what you don't want to what you want, what you really want. Embody peace, embody love, joy, beauty. Doesn't that feel so much better? Feeling that way as you walk through your day? We can consciously, through our spiritual practice, either quietly or as we're moving through our world, become more interested in what we want to experience than what we don't want to experience. As metaphysicians, we know that we're more than our bodies. We know that we're more than our physical environment. We know that there is a divine part of us that is eternal, that actually exists beyond time and space, even as we walk around in human form. And that we will always exist. But right now we know that we have the privilege to be here and now to be expressions of God just for a brief time in time and space on planet Earth. We are the presence of spirit here on Earth in human form. And while we're here, we're empowered to bring the reality of heaven to Earth. We know that human life brings challenges, but we are empowered to greet them in every moment with inspired courage rising up from the depth of our heart the heart we share with God, and we can, we are empowered to speak truth to circumstance. Speak truth to circumstance. Let's pray. I know that all there is is the divine presence. I know I am encompassed by it. And I know that each and every person within the sound of my voice is the same. We are one. We are one in God. We are one in spirit. We are one in life. And we are blessed. We are eternal beings having a, um, a temporal experience here in human form. What a gift. And we are empowered to bring the power of the divine into the human world. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So I speak my word for and about each and every person that is here on this call, knowing that there is a shift. There is a movement in consciousness that brings us to what we are really interested in, being the presence of the divine in every way, in every aspect of our human experience, because it feels so good. So I'm so deeply grateful for the opportunity to be human, to be God in form and to play in the world of experience and form and all the different ways, nature. Thank you, God. So I speak this word into law, knowing that it catches fire with the conviction and the passion of my heart. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at our feet. So I just release this word knowing all is well, and I invite you to signify your agreement by saying with me, and so it is. And so it is. Oh, all right. It always takes me a minute to kind of regroup after that. I kind of feel like I'm out there in the zone somewhere. So you know what? I don't, oh, I know who it is. Jean is supposed to be our benediction person today, and she sent me a text saying that she forgot to tell me she had to take someone to the airport. So someone can step up and want to do it or I can do it. I don't I'll know. do it, Michelle. Bless your sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs> All right, share my screen. Well, it's always fun to follow you, Michelle. <laughs> so we, this is a wonderful time to give and uh, to give to One Heart, One Mind, especially after we received such beautiful music, a beautiful talk from Reverend Michelle and Lisa's beautiful words and prayer. 
and just a feeling of community and connection. So this is just another wonderful way to give back with financial support. And you can do that with Venmo at One Heart, One Mind Center, or you can mail a check and um, the address is right up there. And Reverend Michelle would be happy to pick that up when she goes and visits, right? <laughs> at the mail center. And there's a question there from Claire and Josiah about donation button, maybe. Did you want to answer that, Michelle? You're I'm muted. I'm not looking at it. What did you say? Um, she said, is there a donation button on your website? There is not. We, we've been, <laughs> no, there isn't. These are the two ways, Clara. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and here's our, our, our little prayer for giving. Sacred giving, everything flows from the nature of God's good. We receive from this flow and we give from this flow. We give in gratitude and in love, and we have faith in the infinite giving nature of spirit. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. And we'll come back to you for the benediction, if that's okay, Relaine. Okay, and in the meantime, we will go over to um, Yvonne for our announcements. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, Monday evening prayer center, as usual, 6 o'clock to 620. And please join us on Zoom as we silently pray for one heart one mind or for yourself or for peace or whatever um, floats your boat. <laughs> the Zoom link is in the newsletter. And then Tuesday evening, we have spiritual learning from six to seven. And on Tuesday evening, we'll be discussing part four, which is called Thoughts and Dreams of Michael Singer's book, Living Untethered. And, and you can get the book on Amazon or other places. And Reverend Michelle puts the reading on, on um, <clears throat> the news in the newsletter or just online, so you can find it there. It's really great. We've learned to be quite um, voicey, I guess is a good way to say it, and sharing a lot of really interesting stuff that we've picked up from the book. Um, here's a reminder, don't forget about unexpected income. If you don't think about it and look for it, you won't have it. And I won another $9 in bingo this week. So it makes me laugh because I think, okay, wonder what my unexpected income is going to be this week. And then it turns out all every time I do that, that it's bingo. <laughs> well, that's good. The other thing I want to remind you of is... Um, Reverend Michelle's Facebook page. It's called Spiritual Recovery, A Journey of Positive Change. And um, it's really valuable for someone who's on a journey of um, recovery. So I think that's it. I think it is. Thank you so much. You're such, such an awesome announcer. <laughs> Thank you. And now we're coming back to Relaine to do our benediction. And then Jesse's going to sing us out. All right. So let's just close our eyes and just feel all those um, beautiful aspects of God, abundance and well-being, peace, love, joy, happiness, and just that energy of spirit that's flowing in and of and through each and every one of us. And that energy that's flowing with all of us together and that oneness of spirit. And I'm just so, so very grateful for this talk today and really knowing the truth of who we are and really living the truth and feeling the truth of who we are in our experiences and our expressions and just in our day-to-day -day moments and just remembering and always knowing this. And I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you for um, just the amazing goodness of God, spirit, and how wonderful it is to feel connected and uh, just together with, with, with our community here, with our community at large, just with the 
all people on, on the whole entire planet, including the animals and the mountains and the rivers and the oceans, just, just everything. It's just really such a beautiful oneness and connection, especially as we live the truth of our being. How great is that? And so I just know that there's an amazing shift in consciousness that continues to shift for us as we move more and more into our expressions of who we are. And I'm so grateful that we know this to be true. And I release this prayer with all of you into divine law, knowing it is already so. And we simply say, and so it is. So it is. Michelle, you're muted, but I saw you say my name. <laughs> Jesse! <laughs> Say my name, say my name. Okay, I'll keep it, I'll keep it somewhat brief. And we'll send us off with some energy. Sunshine on my face in the day is made of magic. Sometimes I still find a way to make my life seem tragic. Good things pour down on me like summer rain so warm. I try to run, but it's so much better to dance in this storm. See, I accept my joy without question it's a blessing i accept my pain without question it's a blessing i accept my joy without question it's a blessing i'm expanding and i'm standing in the heart of love in the heart of love in the heart of love in the heart of love, the heart of love. things crumble into chaos and i don't know where to turn next feels like i'm a failure but i know it's all for the I can't see them yet, and if I open my eyes and trust, I'll see that I've been blessed. Oh, I accept my joy without question, it's a blessing, and I accept my pain without question, it's a blessing. I accept my joy without question, it's a blessing. I'm expanding and I'm standing in the heart of love, in the heart of love, in the heart of love, in the heart of love. I see my blessings. I'm accepting no hesitation, no reservation. I see my blessings and I'm accepting no hesitation, no reservation. I see my blessings and I'm accepting no hesitation, no reservation. I see my blessings and I'm accepting no hesitation, no reservation. I accept my joy without question. It's a blessing. I accept my pain without question. It's a blessing. I accept my joy without question. In the heart of love, I love it. Hey, are you ex are you in a different place today than you, you normally are? Are you? I am, and I don't have you, my equipment with me, and it ah, was, that's what, that's the, that's what the difference was. It was a ah, right. Yes, it's okay. We still love you, sweetheart. Thanks. <laughs> sorry, sorry about the sound. No worries. No worries. It's it's a blip on the map. We're moving we're moving past it. <laughs> but I I just enjoy having you with us always. I just do. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, I think I am going to say goodbye to everyone as far as the recording and turn the recording.